Good evening, everyone. I'll call the Tuesday, February 11, 2020 meeting, which happens to be a work session of the Portsmouth City Council for Order. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Here. Mr. Clark? Here. Mr. Glover? Here. Mrs. Lucasburg? Here. Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Mayor Rowe? Here. Dr. Patton? Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of City Council. Tonight we have uh, three presentations, and the first is the Hampton Roads Transit, better known as HRT, Ferry Landing. On the city manager's report this evening is a resolution authorizing an amendment to an agreement with HRT regarding the use of the High Street Pier and the North Landing Pier for public ferry service. Tonight we have with us from HRT, Mrs. Sybil Pappas and Mr. Leroy Paget who will provide City Council with an update of the Elizabeth River Ferry Dock reconstruction in Portsmouth, including High Street and North Landing. The next presentation, the City Treasurer's Report. Mr. Page Cherry, City Treasurer, will give his annual Treasurer's Report this evening. The next item, members of Council, you will discuss your community meeting format. The first community meeting hosted by City Council will be held um, at I.C. Northam High School on Tuesday, February 18, 2020. This will be the first one for the 2020 year. It will begin at 6 p.m. Members of the City Council this evening, you will have time to discuss the format of the meeting so that the City Manager and her staff can plan accordingly. And lastly, City Attorney will speak on the gaming legislation. City Attorney Solomon H. Ashby, Jr. will provide a brief update on gaming legislation. We'll begin with Mr. Padgett. Thank you. Mayor, members of council, my name is Leroy Padgett. I'm HRT's engineer, and I'm the project manager for the, uh, for the ferry project that's ongoing. I'm going to cover the, uh, the work that's currently in progress and then uh, try to do that briefly. And I'm going to hand this over to Sybil Pappas, who will then cover the work that's proposed for the remainder of the years, mostly the amenities piece. I have the civil construction uh, pieces. So let me go through this fairly quickly. There's a few slides here. Uh, the Elizabeth River Ferry Project is a uh, part of a larger grant uh, project really to get our ferry up to a state of good repair. That includes the vessels. You've seen two of them out there. There's two new, two new vessels out there. There's two coming. The second piece is what my, uh, my part of this, and which is the renovation of the ferry docks to get us into the 21st century and to provide state of good repair for the next 25 years. So we'll, we'll then talk about the upgrade of the passenger amenities piece of this, which will be the more exciting and part of it. And then there's a fourth piece, which is upgrading our fare collection. T ticket vending machines, improved ferry collection. We realize that's a weakness in our program. Everybody that's had to do the $2 uh, change to ride the ferry knows that. Um, there, of course, um, well, as you know that we have uh, four docks. We have two in uh, Norfolk and two in Portsmouth High Street. I'm going to concentrate on High Street and North Landing. What are we trying to accomplish with this? Really, we're really only trying to do two things with, uh, with this. I'll let you read that, but uh, there's two things. One, the docks really haven't been overhauled since an, um, since they were built in 1997 and 2001, we had an emergency reconstruction in 2014, but that was that was more or less a band-aid. We've had a full inspection of it. We know what our docks need to get to a state of good repair. We are going to uh, accomplish that with the project over the next few months. The second piece of it is trying to fix some of the ADA compliance. When they built these docks, they really didn't. It wasn't really required that they be uh, fully accessible. Uh, we would like to get that uh, amended but while we have the opportunity. 
Uh, this is one example. This is a fine. Fortunately, <coughs> fortunately for you guys, this is over at Waterside. It's uh, as you can see that that's a, a fairly corroded beam. There's three of them that are coming out. Just to give you an example, marine marine uh, conditions are harsh on any pieces of metal that aren't aluminum. So uh, just that's just one example of what we found and sort of triggered the reason that we wanted to get this out and get it uh, in good condition. This is High Street. Uh, that uh, the, the four by 16 piece of aluminum on the right is the only thing that's holding your dock to the seawall. Um, it it's, does a nice job, but uh, that's not what I want to have in, our, uh, in this city. Um, the third thing, this is the, uh, the ferry boat. You'll notice that the ferry boat, unlike our previous boats, you'll notice there are two ramps there, the two doors. We can have simultaneous exit and entry onto the ferry docks now. All we need now is a ramp that's wide enough to accommodate it. And uh, that's only four foot three wide at High Street. Uh, it's uncomfortable for two people to pass, much less two wheelchairs. So we're trying to, we saw that the opportunity to, uh, to not only repair these docks, but actually to improve them where we could. This is also an issue, although it looks very nice. Actually, uh, North Landing is in excellent structural shape. However, that switch back there where you have to make the 180 degree, you can't, you can't do that comfortably in a wheelchair. It's not ADA uh, compliant. So we saw, again, we see an opportunity to repair what we can here. And lastly, this is the uh, this is actually the ramp. Uh, I believe that one is at North Landing, um, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, that ramp has a wicked slope to it. The uh, what happens is the dock is actually uh, float has actually sunk over the years about five inches. Combination of marine life and the floats going bad. It's just uh, it's just it, it's gone down. The boat the new boats are slightly higher. As you can see that. That slope not only is not compliant, but when we have a motorized chair, a lot of times we actually have to take an extension and hook it onto the ramp to get the slope. Our deck hands have to go out and literally get these guys an extension ramp or else they'd have to push it up the hill. So what we did was, this is, a, this is as of two weeks ago, that was the old high street dock there. Uh, and as you can see on the right, uh, that's the non-existent high street dock. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. These are prefabricated components, so what they can do, it's actually, we don't dismantle them piece by piece. These things come as a unit. So we actually brought a crane in there, and we were able, we actually lifted the entire business, put it on a barge and floated it away. And there's a section over at Norfolk if you want your dock back. But, um, <laughs> but actually what we did, we, we, we had, had, this is the new dock. We've just put this in last week. Uh, we've actually dropped this in. You will notice that that's now a six foot dock. Mm -hmm. uh, we put it on the same footprint, actually, and what we did was we actually moved all the railings. They're all welded to the outside of the dock. So we could actually move this out, get it wider. We didn't have to get an extra marine permit for it. Uh, we're good with the Army Corps. And what this is, it, that boat, we just put the boat up to that this week. I don't, don't have a picture because it was raining today. That ramp comes down dead level. So we will have it, that dock sits about, uh, about 13 inches higher than it did before. So, uh, and there's less of a slope in there. We saw this work, actually, we, we're just, uh, this is the, uh, we have a punch list that replaced things like the uh, railing in there, but for what we've seen of this dock, it, it's, it's, it's quite good. Uh, this, this should last you another 25 years without, without incident. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, last thing that I'm going to speak is the uh, construction status and schedule. We do have some more work out here. Uh, as you notice, we haven't touched North Landing yet, and uh, we still have that work to do. We're going to replace place the two floats that are out there, get that. Is going to open that dock up, and it, it actually should look uh, about the same as what we've got here at High Street. So what we have here is uh, just to give you an idea. When we're done at uh, at High Street this week, we're going to uh, actually move our operation over to a Waterside. We're going to be at Waterside for about three more weeks. We got we have a similar amount of work there. Uh, we've already ripped Harbor Park apart. There's nothing left except some joists. Uh, that, that's going to open April before baseball season. Uh, then in March and April, we're going to be out at North Landing. 
We've got, you know, fortunately we have two floats there, so we don't have to do the same closure that we had to do at High Street. So this, that'll be a little bit easier for us. But again, we're trying to get that in, so by the time summer, by contract, this contractor has to finish up by the uh, beginning of summer season, because uh, we, we told them May 31st, or summer season begins, we go to 15 minute uh, service, and we want all four docks done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Sybil Pappas. She's going to tell you who's going to pay for it, because it isn't me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Leroy. Mr. Mayor, members of council, I bring you the good news. Um, so we anticipated needing to bring uh, facilities to a state of good repair across our agency, Hampton Roads Transit did, several years ago, and so we applied for this $9.2 million overall grant. As Leroy mentioned, that grant includes uh, four new ferry boats will be provided for that money. Uh, this amenities work that I'm talking about will be provided. The docks coming into a state of good repair is going to be included, and so too will the new ticket vending machines and fare collection system. So all of that is included in nine. 9.2 million. The amenities portion is 3.2 million and you can see sort of roughly how that breaks down between federal, state, and local money. Um, so Portsmouth's contribution is about $65,000 on $9.2 million. So that's on the total project. And we've already collected that money from you. You paid it last year. So um, this is fully funded and moving right along. So the amenities. Um, the, the inspiration for the amenities truly was about ADA access and trying to enhance accessibility to the greatest extent possible. We emphasized safety, so we added things like um, lighting, additional lighting where we could, uh, energy efficient LED lighting everywhere we could, additional cameras that don't exist out there right now, but also additional amenities just to make it more comfortable uh, and enjoyable. We see this as the entree into our system for a lot of customers, so we want it to be as as user-friendly as it possibly can be. It will include uh, ticket vending machines that are much more user-friendly and that eliminates the need for exact change to be able to get on the boats that some of you may have already experienced. But it also includes uh, a speaker, maybe some real-time data so people can see when the next boat's going to show up, although the wait's not usually very long for the ferry, but still every now and again there might be an, an issue where the ferry's delayed on the other side because of a medical emergency say this real-time information gives people that notice in real time so that they know that another boat's going to be on its way. Um, a lot of wayfinding signage and, and we entertain the signage going a little further into the city so we might be able to have some signs that direct people from downtown to the ferry uh, in the places where that's appropriate and it's not absolutely obvious. Um, so all of this is being worked through right now and being submitted for city review and once we have a final set of plans for this we'll um, then start doing the construction for these things too. You, you have a sense for the locations. The ticket vending machine will go um, sort of essentially where that ticket vending machine is right now where the I think coffee vendor has been located. And then at North Landing the location is shifting a little bit. We're trying to be mindful of uh, future proposed development by others, uh, so we don't want to be located in a place that is a problem for what's going to happen there in the future. Um, so we're being thoughtful about the way we cite that. You have a sense here for what the ticket vending machines look like. They're designed to be uh, accommodated in narrow spaces so that we're not taking more space than we need to, but they're lit, they have cameras, um, and they're m much more user-friendly, so it's a different style ticket vending machine than you see in our system today. Um, the inspiration for the canopies, for the, for the canopied waiting areas, was Portsmouth's working waterfront. So the idea here is um, sort of hearkening back to shipping containers. You see the corrugated me metal that's sort of yep. colorful. Um, we thought it would be useful for people to have different colors at different ferry docks. So you, at least you could remember, oh, I got off on the green one, mm -hmm. um, yeah. if, if nothing else. Um, and these are lit with uh, fancy, but not really, LED lights that make it possible to change the lighting. So if we wanted to have holiday colors, we could do that for the month of December or that kind of thing. And of course it costs absolutely no more to be able to do that today. Uh, and it's much more efficient. 
Um, so here's the high street dock and you can see it day and night, the rendering that we expect. And there's North Landing. And I haven't included uh, the Norfolk side, but you get the picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will be helpful for people because they do get lost mm -hmm. yeah. on the two Portsmouth right. locations. You know, if you're not used to it, they sort of look the same. Mm. Um, so that's it. I'm happy to entertain questions. <laughs> questions or comments? Very nice. Yes. Very nice. Well, first of all, I'm thrilled. Um, the question about Norfolk is the um, once you get off the ferry at Waterside, is the deck coming up? So, I mean, where it floods so badly, the actual dock. You want to speak to that? Um, actually, the the unfortunate you come to the is, is we have a mic. Here, um, Leroy, it's, Leroy. it's just thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, Oh, sorry. The relative speakers here. The the answer is no, um, because where we can we couldn't change the elevation of the fixed portion of the dock. We only control to where that finger goes out, and beyond that, in fact, you can tell the bad Norfolk joke, but you can tell where our our dock ends and the, the wood on the Norfolk side begins because we used a better quality wood. But uh, anyway, but, but the, the short answer is no. If we get a Dorian, it is going to flood up the, that's actually why we couldn't put a, a ticket vending machine down on that dock itself. We actually had to put it, we're actually proposing all the way at the entrance because we don't want to have a, a $75,000 unit under about three feet of water. Thank you. Sure. I just have a comment. Um, I thought it was unique that they're using for the ticket centers um, to dispense the change back the um, the dollar coins. Um, a couple of our special friends uh, ride the ferry over um, during the week, and they were excited to get back um, the gold money, as they call I'm it. I'm so glad they were pleased, yes. and an equal number of people have yelled at me for weighing down their pockets. There <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> was a question over here. No, sir, not in that. Um, and I don't know if this is for y'all to answer, but it's part of this discussion. I think the ferry is great. I've ridden it ever since high school, been involved with it. Um, but we have an ordinance coming up tonight. It's something that I have questioned in the past. We're having an ordinance about the mooring of the ferries at High Street Landing and uh, North Landing. And the question being is, historically, all the ferries, when they're not in use, they have always docked them at our two places. And my concern with that always is we don't have much frontage to dock vessels there. So it precludes citizens from docking their vessels to come downtown to our restaurants and other eateries and bars and everything else. And I was looking at this ordinance, and since we share this venture really between the city of Norfolk, why couldn't we dock them when not in use half and half because they have a lot more docking space a full marina and other places in Norfolk but historically they're always docked when not in use and if we're going to have four of them that's taken up at least half of our high street landing and north landing that precludes citizens from coming in so that's a concern that I've had for a while. Councilman Clark we'd be happy to look at it. Um, HRT's ferries are operated by a separate entity called Norfolk by Boat, um, who we contract with, and uh, David Jordan is the operator of that firm, and I'm sure many of you know him. He's sort of a fixture here in Portsmouth. Uh, I th I'm sure he'd be very amenable to reconsidering the way we're doing it, if, if it's possible at all. So I'm happy to take that back and we can look at it. And, and that's fine, And uh, but that's the thing. We have an ordinance coming up tonight to vote on, and uh, I just don't think it should be you know, wide open that we could park all four of them in our city when not in use because it takes so much of our dock space up. And that's that's just my concern for, you know, we're trying to get more people to come in by boat, intercoastal waterway, and we want them to stop here, but if there's nowhere for them to tie up because, you know, when it's light season, only one ferry is working and the other three of them are moored, sure. they just can't get in. Yeah. Um, you know, this isn't my particular area. I'm in charge of engineering and sure, construction. Sure, and I understand that. Um, but I did note that the ridership on the ferry last year was about 820,000 um, users going both ways to, to Norfolk and to, to Portsmouth. So it is a lot of people who are being impacted. I'm sure David Jordan and HRT would be happy to reconsider the way we're doing it. Thank you. I think, I think the answer to that as well is 
the, the, the ordinance that's, that's out there really doesn't cover that operation. I mean, it's really a, it's, a, it's almost a reimbursement agreement, as it were, when you read it. But I think what, what would be appropriate, if you want to bring that up, we do have an operating agreement with Norfolk by boat. And if we were to put that in that agreement, I think that would be the place for it. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? <coughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Good job. This is exciting. Yeah, it is. And it's our pleasure now to call uh, Paige Cherry, the Honorable Paige Cherry, who's our city treasurer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thanks for having me. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council. It's my pleasure <coughs> to come back to see you again uh, this year, as I did last year at the same time, to just give you an update on some of the things we talked about last year and what we're doing in, in the Treasurer's Office to, to make you more profitable. Mm -hmm. Last when I came, I told you that it was the year of transition. But now we've transitioned. We had a whole year on those things, and we're, we're here to take some results. We talked to you last year about our, in, our inbox, a new lockbox in the mail. You had an issue about where your mail went. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lalande handed you the envelope with the new address on it. Speaking of Mr. Lalande, he's sitting behind you. <laughs> Deputy Treasurer Mr. Lalande, he, he, he's the, he is the he does our intern program, our, our IT liaison, and, and anything else we, we, we throw at him. To the left is Ms. Kira Branch, she's deputy treasurer as well, and she runs our real estate division. And sitting between them is the lady who runs everything, to include me. <laughs> um, Ms. Joyce Gardner, she's been in the treasurer's office since uh, Charles Whitehurst was, was treasurer. She's done every position, done everything, and she, and she is the engine that makes the treasurer's office run. So, so all the things I'm going to talk about this evening that, that are good and great, they make them happen. I just kind of wake up in the morning, come in with an idea, and throw it at them, and, and they figure it out. <laughs> but our lockbox is going well. Uh, so we now process all, all payments here. No, no longer going to Richmond. Yes. Saving the city about nine, ten thousand dollars 10000 a month just on that. Wow. I talked to you about cross-training our, our personnel, and we got forced to do that this year, really, to ramp it up, because we had a few personnel that were out for various reasons for extended time periods. So it forced us to really ramp up and make sure everyone can do everything. So we have cashiers working who, who go back and work in real estate and go back and work in personal property. We have personal property people go out when the time is, is right, is busy, to, to be cashiers. Mm -hmm. So everybody's done, because we don't want you to come in our office and say, we can't help you today because Kira didn't come to work. Mm -hmm. That won't happen to Treasure's Office because everyone can do just about everything. Mm -hmm. I told you also that one my, of well, my focuses for the year was to, by the end of the year, was to have an online payment. Well, I'm pretty pleased to say on November 25th, we launched our new online payment system. Uh, you can now go in and pay your personal property, real estate, EMS, parking, and if you want to, you can log in, you can set yourself up, and never have to have a bill again. You know, all you need to know is your login and your password and pull up all, all your bills. Good. So Great. we made that happen on November 25th, and I made it by the end of the year, as I told you I would. Mm -hmm. That's going to be very important because it has allowed me to reduce my cost in, in printing and in mailing, which I'm ready to give some money back to the city on that day. So in a couple of weeks, we're going to mail out 13,000 personal property bills mm -hmm. and 13,000 real estate bills. In April, we're going to mail out 67,000 plus personal property bills for cars. What's important about that is all those millennials who don't write checks, who have cars but don't have houses, can now register for this online system, and we can greatly reduce our need for postage. Mm -hmm. And so, and they have been calling for that, uh, the millennials. So, and so, some of you might still might be able to do it yeah, too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but but that age group particularly uh, will, will benefit from this, and we all will. So now all you have to have in Portsmouth is know your login, know your password, pay your bill. So you have no excuse. Yeah. If you're on, on cruise yeah. and they have Wi-Fi, you should still pay me. <laughs> <laughs> we also talked about doing in-house auctions. Uh, 
We, we brought auctions here. We did our first one here on January the 20th, January 30th, right in this building. I can thank Ms. White and her staff for, for training us up on how, how to use the uh, all the things in the, in the facility there, and it went great. Uh, I, I got to tell you, you would have thought we had been doing them for forever. Uh, we had 22 properties that we were going to try to sell. Six of those properties were after redeemed the week before, you know, two, three days before, which, which is good. Uh, Ten properties sold that night, and we had six that didn't sell. So 73% of all the properties that we had listed for that tax sale were, were sold. And the good things about the ones that was redeemed prior to, the three days prior to, those taxes were paid in full. And the reason why I wanted to change the, this system was when I first took office in January of 18, the first auction was held about three or four weeks later. After coming back and examining the results of that auction, the special commissioner got paid, the auction years got paid, but not a lot of money was the taxes. So the money, the, the parts went back in the tax roll, but it's a tax auction. So if, I'm, if we're going to sell somebody's house, for taxes. The least we can do is make sure the taxes get paid. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing now, what we did this, this time, we, we're ensuring that taxes get paid. So if we're going to at least take somebody's house, we'll at least pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. And the city ought to get it, because it's a tax sale. Mm -hmm. So that, that's now happening. And I'm so pleased that it went so very well. Um, we were very nervous about it because it was our first one. But with the help of some of your city staff, the city attorney's office was also there. Mr. Ch Mr. Challenger will help us a lot out on that. So we appreciate you all. When I was here last year, uh, this time, I told you about what we made in, in interest for the, for the year. And we didn't, we couldn't predict what we we're going to do in the future because every time something happened in D.C., whether it's a trade or whatever, some, something goes out of tweak, it affects the, the rates. So we had, we, we had to be very mindful of that. So we did not make as much money in investment income. We made 2.3 million as opposed to 2.7. But what we did, and I got this from, from you all, the last two times over here, you, you asked the question, someone asked the question each time, where the money was. And that's what's going to generate fund. So having sat around this table for almost eight years, I know when the same question is asked <coughs> twice by the that means people are looking for a different answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a different answer for tonight. We took that money, the interest money, put it in another account, and we're now making the interest on the interest. Mm -hmm. wow. So that $433,000 you see is the interest on the interest. and made the difference in what we didn't make in investment interest. Mm, so and, 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 mm -hmm. and you'll recall reading the paper uh, about us making eighty to $82,000 a year, or I talked to you last time, a quarter from the bank instead of paying them $40,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the, the what we had at the end of 18. In the 19, after there were no documents, now we're making about $106,000 a quarter as opposed to paying $40,000 a quarter for banking services. Mm -hmm. In two years, in two years, we made to 5.5, almost $5.6 million. And right now we have about $2.5 million of that sitting in the interest on the interest account. So, 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 so whoever asked the question last time, <laughs> that's where it is, Lisa. Yes. It's, it's, sitting, it's sitting in that account. Now, those figures are through the December of 2019. Mm -hmm. Since then, we've made $185,000 in interest income. Uh, $183,000 of interest, interest income and $2,000 interest on the interest. So every dollar we have in the bank, if it's there 24 hours, it's making some money for us. Okay. We have four auctions scheduled, one each quarter. Of course, we had the first one. And you're all welcome to come. We have them right here in the city hall, and we're using this room for, for afterwards us as well. You can come, but you can't bid. <laughs> but, we'll, but we'll be glad to have you. Just, just want to give you the date so you'll be, you'll be aware of them. Uh, as I said, Ms. Ms. White was, was very influential on that. Mr. Pace uh, helped us promote the auctions, make sure we got it all properly recorded, because we have a backup recording for the courts in case there are any questions. He helped us with that, so we want to thank him as, him as well. And, and we also want to thank the police chief who's not here for making sure we have security for, for that night, because you never know. You are selling people's property, and sometimes they get a little upset about that. Mm -hmm. 
use our collection rates for the last past years. Um, we're state mandated to do 95% in real estate and 90% in personal property, and we're, we're beating both of those. Mm -hmm. And as you saw, the delinquent collection rates, we read the paper, uh, it was up some 38% as well. And that's just going after the ones who, who owe more money. We, we are doing payment plans every day with people who need it, especially the working people and the, and the seniors who, who, are, who, are just, who are trying to do the right thing. Uh, we all payment plans to make sure that we can work on as best we can. But you have a lot of people who I call skilled tax evaders. <laughs> we don't work so well with them. <coughs> and, and, they're, and, and they're usually people who have more, who just don't want to don't pay more. So, so that is, so they are really the reasons why our rates were up for the delinquency, because as you read, we're not doing more liens, we're just going after people who have the ability to pay. That 2.2 million is what is budgeted for the treasurer's office between state and city funding. And I put this slide just to say that just in interest income offers more than pays for itself with a 25% rate of return. You can't you can't get that rate of return anywhere. Now that doesn't count. That doesn't count the real estate, the personal property, the EMS, uh, and all the other fees that we collect. That's just what we make your own uh, investment and interest income. We still do all the other collecting of water bills and all those other things that, w that, we're, that we're here to do. But just that alone. And if you add all these other things together, you know, I would venture to say we're, we're, we're probably one of your most popular organizations in the city. Future focus. We'll continue with digitalization. If, if there, if I said to Dr. Patton and, and the staff before, if there are organizations <coughs> in the city who need to scan and store things, uh, our new OPEX machine has that capability. You can scan them. You just have to get with the IT. And IT, I, I got to give IT a shout out because they're in my office uh, at least three, sometimes four, sometimes five days a week. Because everything we do just about involves some IT, particularly with the uh, online payment system, that could not happen without IT. None of that happens without IT. They're there every day. Uh, we, could, we couldn't run our real estate system, our personal property system, none of that without IT. So we, they have about two or three employees on there who probably feel like they're part-time treasury employees. <laughs> <laughs> and we treat them like family. Matter of fact, I even wrote one of them up for employee of the month. Uh, <laughs> and she got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> This, uh, the, the intern program has been fantastic for us. Uh, we have had 26 outstanding kids so far. Uh, we have six right now. And Dr. Patton, I they wanted to want me to tell you that um, I revealed they had a college reveal day last year. This year it's going to be on, on May the 22nd. Uh, last year we had the superintendent was there, Dr. Patton was there, the, the counselors from the three high schools were there, and some of the principals. It was so crowded, we had to move it up to the fifth floor this year. So yeah. 22nd, I think it's 2 o'clock. Okay. 22nd at 2 o'clock. They, they moved it back because the, the students who, had, who were here last year, who are now in college, want to come back mm -hmm. this year. As a matter of fact, one of them called me today. Yeah. And we want to make sure we move it back so they can come and be a part <laughs> of the process. So we are really grooming these, these young folks who, who now maybe think about coming back to Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. So we just gotta make sure there's something for them to come back to, particularly jobs for them to come back to. So we're doing our we're doing our part. As I said with the online, you can pay your personal property tax, you can pay your real estate tax, you can pay your EMS, you can pay your parking. My goal now is to work with the public utilities department to get them in the same system so you can truly have a one stop online shop for Portsmouth. We shouldn't have personal opinion. We shouldn't have two places to go. When you go pay online, you click on one, you just go to one place. If we get public utilities in on this, you can log in, set it up, and have all your accounts come up at one time. Mm -hmm. And if you want to pay them all at once, you, you, you'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. But right now, you, you can't do that. You can do it with all but that. So that, that's a goal for the future. And we're looking into, we're going to try next year, coming year, online real estate auction. Kiara was smiling back there because <laughs> I keep thinking this stuff and she keeps trying to figure out how to do it. Uh, so, so maybe next year when I come back, I can tell you about our first online real estate auction. Not sure how it's going to work. Don't, don't, don't know. Don't, can't tell you anything about it right now. I, I know it's something I've seen once, and I think we're going we're gonna to try at least once to see how it works for us. So with that, 
Any questions? Well, first, on behalf of the council, thank you for an outstanding, yes. extraordinary job. Yes. Yes. Really. With that, any questions or comments? Lisa? I just have one question about um, the online. Say if I'm on that cruise in the Bahamas and I forget to pay it and it's the 30th, is that same day or is it? Same day. Same day. Same day. Okay. Now, 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 while this was very good for us, it also created more work for us because when you call and say, I can't get in and my payment doesn't work, you know, I talk to somebody in India. You're talking to somebody on the first floor in the treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. All people go in, look at the system, and, and work, you, work you through it. So it, mm -hmm. it, it made it convenient for, this, for the citizen, but it created more work for, work for us. Mm -hmm. but, but as I tell my, tell my folks every day, if there are no taxpayers, there are no us. Mm -hmm. so, so we, we treat, remember that every day. So if you're on that cruise and you got an issue, if you can get a connection, we can, we can take care of it. But it is, it is real time. Mm -hmm. It's real time. We can, we can actually be on the phone with you and watch you make your payment. Okay. So as long as you don't cruise past international date lines. Then we got it. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. <laughs> it's going to be taken care of, Morgan. If you're in different time zone, you're late. You're late. That's it. That's it. <laughs> we're on Eastern Standard. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. um, Mr. Terry, uh, I want to thank you, and I, I thank you for being a very engaged treasurer. Mm -hmm. I can remember when you came on board, one of the things you shared in our first meeting was your wanting to make opportunities for students. And of all of the departments who have participated in the um, municipal fellows and uh, intern program, your department has been the lead department. And most of your students have left gone on to college and are advancing through college. And I, I think that that's a result of your giving them opportunity to work after school, to work um, during the summer months, and then repeat it as they progress through high school. Secondly, when you came on board, you began to ask about funds. And one of the funds that when I came here in 1986 as the director of Parks and Recreation, I was in charge of the Perpetual Care Fund. And you asked me about that fund, and I said, when I came to town, that money was sitting in an account, and it, I'm back 33 years later, and it's still sitting. And he said to me, Dr. Pat, if we could invest it, that money from 86 to now, I can't tell you how many millions the city would have. And I'm thinking back to all the years that we didn't invest our money, and you've been here two years, and you have made almost $3 million look what we could have had if that money was invested. And then when he shared with me, I'm taking the invested money and now I'm rolling it over and investing that and that 400 and something thousand. You're doing a remarkable job that is helping the financial status of this city. And, and I pray that what you are putting in place now goes into perpetuity mm -hmm. so that the city can always make money off of the money that we have. Thank you so much. Ma'am, and speaking of the, of the cemetery fund, we made forty forty six thousand dollars on that this year as well. Yeah. It's just a small amount of money, it's a million dollars, but, but we made forty six thousand dollars on it because it's better than sitting, sitting on, the, on your pillow. The 30, and, 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 and we can keep this going, just got to keep me in office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good plug, good plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. you, you're always campaigning, just remember that. Yeah. Uh, Yes, Thank you so very much. Yes, yeah. can, can, can I ask you, you, you folks one, uh, one thing? And this, and this, this involves uh, HR. Um, as I talked to you about um, us having to do all this cross-training and, and trying to pick back and forth, you know, we've had a couple of employees that have been out for a while. We've got one that's been out for a while uh, since, since October. And uh, we now know it's not going to be returning in, in, uh, after March 1st. We went through our business season uh, end of the second quarter in, in December. We were lucky just moving people around. Now that I know that that person is not going to be back, going to be retired on the 1st of August, I just, I just need to be able to hire somebody right now so I can have them ready for um, the end of, end of the third quarter. The person is in a no, a no pay status, so, so there's, no, there's no dollars to the, to the city, but it's a fully 
it's a hundred percent city funded position. Mm -hmm. So I just need the nod that, that I can go ahead and do do that right now, and it won't cost you to city any money. But it will be two people, two names in that position for it for part of the day. You call it to my attention. We'll get with Mrs. Um, Gooden, and you had spoke of that person that was going to be out, and we didn't know it was going to be that time. Yeah, we so, could make that happen. And, and that way, I'm 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 ready for for the for the end of the third quarter. Right. With, without it, without any issues. I'll get uh, with you tomorrow with Ms. Good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm in Paul's I am thoroughly <coughs> impressed and proud of the professionalism that you've displayed. It's impeccable and it's one of a kind. Please continue. Thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 We're next. Um, our community meeting format. That's on you. <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, yes, Mayor, that's a discussion for. I know, I know. you want to yeah. tee it up? Who wants to tee it up? Mm -hmm. We have a community meeting and we haven't discussed the format. It's at Norcom. It's going to be in the auditorium, is yes, it not? Sir. Yes. Um, that makes it difficult to have tables, mm -hmm. certainly. Very difficult. Uh, how do you all want to handle this? The old-fashioned way where we sit in chairs um, off the stage <coughs> and have people come to a mic? Just, I say that to break the ice. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like going to people, but instead of them coming to the mic, couldn't we have some people mobile with wireless microphones and go to them? That's fine, too. Yeah. Wireless. Bill? And I think last time we had that type of format, uh, we started off with uh, an informative piece, mm -hmm. uh, uh, information that we felt uh, <coughs> uh, citizens might uh, be interested in and maybe aren't uh, that knowledgeable on uh, a different aspect, whatever that would be, whether it be economic development, uh, whether it be the budget process. I, I mean, we have a, mm -hmm. we certainly have a, uh, since we just came off of a retreat, mm -hmm. I would think that we would want to impart uh, uh, our next, uh, uh, our next initiatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in fact, I think uh, some of that uh, involved uh, uh, public engagement. Mm -hmm. Particularly the city park piece and mm -hmm. uh, two of the things, and some of you all mentioned it at the retreat. Uh, we had the public utilities piece mm -hmm. that is very informative. That the, the public, you know, would learn a lot from mm -hmm. a presentation, even if you wanted it scaled down. And definitely the um, uh, municipal facilities piece, which is very informational, that could be scaled down mm -hmm. so that the public will know. Really? Um, the status and conditions of uh, facilities that we're dealing with. So uh, that's two presentations. We could have, um, and I, I um, have Mr. Um, Moore coming on the February 25th meeting, which is the same meeting that our city assessor will be presenting his annual report. But we could have Mr. Uh, Moore to give a overview of 2019, not as detailed as he will give in here, of mm -hmm. all of the things that have been accomplished. Mm -hmm. So that's three things that we could possibly have. N not long and drawn out, but... What, what's, mm -hmm. what, what, what's wrong with, uh, uh, I'm sure citizens say, hey, these folks were uh, gone for a day and a half. What, 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 what did you do? What, what are some of the Somewhere initiatives? We could do that. Uh, just an executive summary. We could do that. If you may. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be uh, utmost uh, importance. So you want to start with the retreat mm -hmm. update, which we're working with Mrs. Um, uh, Mrs. Uh, per year, which I should have that summary within the next day or so. We start with the retreat overview mm -hmm. highlights. And then what about the other three Well, things? I think what you ought to do, we let's just have a free conversation here and then we can decide where we are. I, I think the recreation is such a big component. I mean, that's that touches everybody, young and old, as we talked about. And um, the concept of the um, trying to do more at the sportsplex, mm -hmm. 
And I'm sure there are a lot of people who have, don't know what's been done there already. And yeah, I'm certain. Um, and then segue into the city park aspect. Of course, that's, that's pretty major. Well, and I agree with that 100%, but I think it would be nice, like Dr. Patton mentioned, Robert Moore, given, let him, if he went first, to update us on what happened last year, and then move into our retreat and let them know what we discussed, and then solicit information about City Park and the Sportsplex and move forward. So that way we're giving them a, a view of what was accomplished in 2019, how our retreat started, where we're headed, and the assistance we'll need from the citizens to get there. Uh, that, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. I, you made me think, too. I think uh, sandwiched in between economic development and the retreat is a report by Daniel Jones on the on the uh, fiber ring because smart, that's, smart city that, fiber. that's so cutting edge. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Council members, are you intending for the public to speak? <laughs> good question. These mm -hmm. these presentations want to be short, and that, I wouldn't do the no, we can the infrastructure. I'd leave it to either three, not more than four. Oh, too. I was going to say, I, to me, if if the city manager or or you said we, you know, I love the starting with Robert Moore with, mm -hmm. with the good story, mm -hmm. and then somebody says, and at the retreat, the topics at the retreat were one through ten. Mm -hmm. The uh, we we did focus a lot on recreation, and we would like to share with the public what we heard and what we discussed about the sports plaque and city park because in the very near future we want to hold a charrette mm -hmm. to hear from the public what they want and think about these items mm -hmm. and then stop and let the public talk about whatever they yeah. came to talk about because mm -hmm. that's going to be new and different they're not going to have an opinion in a, in a moment i still think that we need to have a two-minute brief on the fiber ring. Fiber. The fiber. Oh, I smart city. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So we have economic development. We'll kick off with that fiber mm -hmm. ring. And then a quick summary of the retreat with the focus uh, on uh, recreation, subcategories, uh, the sportsplex, and city park ending with we will have charrettes coming up. And I think one other topic um, that, that we need to keep out in front is the uh, census, the complete count committee. We, we, need to have, we need to have something there that because that's going to be a big deal. Can you have a table there on the census? It would be a perfect opportunity. For it would be a good opportunity. We could have uh, in, uh, information table <coughs> and um, to give out information. Um, the the jobs are filled, so we're not looking for anyone else. We but can I, have it. We can, can we, have an information table and someone to speak to them about the census. Can we ask the um, complete count committee if they could staff the uh, the table? Yeah. And maybe I'm sure that we could get literature that could be passed out uh, in the process. Yeah. And that forum is two days later on the 20th, that's so we right. can um, invite them to yeah, that. That's a great. Forum. That's, that's a great. Right. Yeah, I don't think all these presentations ought to – everything we talked about shouldn't Ten last minutes. more than 15, 20 minutes. Because yeah. we're there to – 30 at the max. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're there to hear from the citizens, <coughs> the community. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that how you want to do it? Yeah. Uh, do, do, you, uh, do you think, um, while we'll have the complete count um, table and staff, but I think we should – we could even invite the committee to be there so people, mm -hmm. the citizens who see, see who yeah. is our complete count committee that's right. been working for months mm -hmm. right. in order to get where we are. Sure. Okay. Well, the mayor can say the complete count committee is here. Please stand. It's mm -hmm. chaired by that's right. Susie Citizen right. and feel free to talk to these folks as right. you've been working for months. Feel about today. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. You all good? Good okay. plan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody comfortable? Uh, who will give the um, update on the retreat? Would it be staff or one of you all? Uh, let's think about that. Um, 
<laughs> it could be me. I think it should be. Yeah. 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 It should be. Yeah. 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 Council yeah. retreat. Yeah. 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 Right. I'll do it. Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, so we have economic development starting, uh, followed by the retreat update. Smart City was third, and then we're going to have staffing. Yeah. What's and economic development first? First, fiber ring, Two. retreat okay. summary, and then conclude with a shout out to the census. Okay. Yep. So that's four. We got that. Okay. Okay. All right. And that starts at six, not seven. Six. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We adjusted the time to make it a little bit earlier, and we only have two hours. Yes. Yeah. Good. So it's six to eight. Okay. Yes. And if we can get the one ring <coughs> mics, that's fine. Hmm? If we can get the, the mics, wondering mics. I will work on that mics. tomorrow. Um, if not, we can always put two stationary mics in the house. We'll work yeah. somebody take a okay. We'll get it done. All right. Everybody comfortable? Mm hmm Any discomfort? Uh, legislative update. Solomon? Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of City Council, if, if you have not been aware, uh, today is crossover day. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an interesting day in our General Assembly where uh, today is the last day for bills to pass each respective house in order to cross over and be considered in the uh, opposing house. Um, one of the updates I wanted to provide you all is as of uh, February 11th, uh, the House Bill 4, uh, as it relates to gaming, did in fact pass the House, having had all three readings and ultimately passed the House 61 to 33. Uh, this evening I've been a little distracted because the Senate Bill 4, uh, uh, patroned by Senator Lucas, uh, has not as yet passed. So I've got one eye on uh, my phone trying to see if we can get the latest updates with regard to that bill as time goes forward. But we still have uh, six hours and ten minutes mm -hmm. roughly to, to accomplish that today. And they're still in session. They are. They are. Mm -hmm. they are. As a matter of fact, one of the uh, most pleasurable parts of today was uh, there was a period of time for about three hours where our Senator Louise Lucas was in fact uh, president of the Senate, mm -hmm. presiding over the Senate. And so that was uh, great to sort of be watching that. I, I was hoping the bill would mm -hmm. come through while she was presiding, but uh, we've got a few more hours to see if that happens. Uh, one of the changes, one of the latest changes is since I gave you an update uh, on, over the weekend with regard to House Bill 4, has been uh, that there's been some language changed as it relates to both Richmond and Norfolk. Um, you will recall those two localities had a uh, relationship with the Pamunkey Indians in terms of their uh, qualifications and their expectations in terms of moving forward. Um, that language changed from a requirement to a preference in order to give those two localities a little more latitude in the selection of their operators. So that came through, that last change came through, I believe, on the floor amendment in the House. But otherwise, uh, uh, the bill stand on the same, the House bill stands on the same ground as we discussed uh, over the weekend. And uh, we'll continue to look forward to that uh, passing of Senate bill. Uh, 36 okay. Any uh, questions tonight. Solomon? Um, How about this? Uh, we, we had this. Uh, um, yeah, I'll just you, you gonna yeah. bring it up? Um, I got an email today, which I made a paper copy for you all mm -hmm. and for hopefully everybody that's in, in here. Mm -hmm. It's from a doctor in Williamsburg, a PhD doctor, not a medical doctor, although he's been married to a medical doctor and has a, a child that's a doctor. Senate Bill 993 is the bill that she brings up. And I made a copy, what part of her email, <coughs> of the bill was put in by Senator Mamie Lott. But essentially what it does, uh, it changes state policy. In the past, up until if this bill passes, you had to be a medical doctor in, it, in order to be the director of the health department. And remember, the health department, although we call it the Portsmouth Health Department, is actually run by the state. Um, 
what this would allow is for some other type of edu uh, education credential, like a PhD in health or a master's in health. And because of the impact that it could have on us, it gives me concern. I think you know, we have a very high incident of uh, diabetes in Portsmouth, yes. and we need a, a public health director who is understands the, <coughs> the disease and its treatment and what one should do in order to combat this uh, could be a life-threatening disease. And so she was asking uh, that we contact, it was addressed to me, uh, our, our, and this has crossed over. Mm -hmm. It's already been reported out of the, uh, the Senate. So it's on the House side. And so I put it before you to see if you share the same concern. And if you do, uh, then we could do a letter um, saying on behalf of city council, we ask that you not vote, support this legislation and send it to the House. So what do you guys think, you all think? I, I agree. I think it should be a, a medical physician that has the knowledge to be in that position because it's going to affect everybody from the top to the bottom about their health care that they're receiving. And if you have somebody not that they're not highly educated with a PhD, but not in a medical field, I think with the health department, it needs to be the medical field to make sure that the best care is given to the people that, that seek that out. I mean, eventually, if I've got a PhD in public health, I still have to have a doctor to go to. I mean, with, with everything I've been dealing with the last few years, Days, week with with you know yes virus Chinese virus. Yes. I mean right. this this is what these folks do, and they right. got to be an MD. Right. Call you okay? Yes. Yeah. It's not just an administrative position. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's too many health risks out there. Yeah. Not and to have a doctor. Absolutely okay. um, eliminates the additional um, having to spend funds on a director and a, a, a physician. So, mm -hmm. however, we can streamline it to get the best okay. result. Well, what we'll do, we'll then do a letter that I'll sign on behalf of council, copy council, we'll send it to, we'll find out where this has been referred to in the house. We'll certainly cover our delegation and state our position. All right, there was one more. I uh, sent you an email too on um, a budget amendment uh, that deals with uh, House Bill 599. Mm -hmm. That's not a current bill. Uh, back in the 80s, um, the General Assembly uh, enacted, passed a bill that happened to be numbered uh, House Bill 599. The state um, had a moratorium on annexation. Cities were fighting that. Counties wanted the moratorium. So they did a study to see what services they provided counties and what services they provided uh, cities. And in the county, VDOT maintains the streets and roads, and in the cities, the cities get lane mileage. And they went down and they came to public safety. In public safety, the sheriff's department and the state police. Uh, do policing, but it's the sheriff's department, and that at that time was almost fully funded by the state, and there was no similar thing on the city side, and so the concept was to create a new um, bucket of money that would only go to those localities that had police departments, which were both at that time cities and towns, with a floor that said if it went down below that the moratorium, moratorium on annexation would go away. Well, over time, as the governor and as governors and general assembly members have tried to balance the budget, they rated this fund. Mm -hmm. And so the curve has been downward, the floor went away, they're actually below the floor. And so this budget <coughs> amendment uh, would bring us an additional $828,000 dollars over the buy it in, which is not too shabby at all. That's mm -hmm. the equivalent of one the penny. Yeah, yeah, a penny. So I think we need to also send a letter to the conferees saying get on board. Yeah, absolutely. 
Everybody want to bring to it? Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Fan, are you aware of any other updates you've got? We got I have the, I've got to go through the city manager's report. No, no, on the legislation. Uh, yes, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council, every Monday you're receiving in the box. The, this will be your update number six uh, from Advantage uh, Strategies. And they are wonderful. They are. Yeah. And they uh, actually give you a summary of all of the bills mm -hmm. and then a chart of where they are in the process. So um, Mr. Crockett um, is, has asked, did council feel that they were helpful? And I, from the first yeah. that you received, oh, I responded very. back to him, keep them coming. First time we've ever had this. Mm -hmm. And council is really appreciated. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, for everybody's information, Laura Bateman mm -hmm. is part of our lobby group. Mm -hmm. She works for Advantis. Um, she's a contract employee. They've tried to make her permanent. She prefers the contract status. So it's mm -hmm. for all practical purposes. She, mm -hmm. She's our lobby yeah. along with Ron, Ron Jordan mm -hmm. and, um, and Robert Crockett. It's a nice right. departure from the previous group. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you see that team all over We're working for us yeah. and work they know what our it's how we fit in yeah. and what our needs are both individually and as we're reaching. Can I add a comment to that as well? Uh, with Laura Bateman um, being our lobbyist with Avantis um, and also with Virginia First Cities, uh, some of the budget items that they were concerned with, of course, um, item four oh eight was um, the five ninety nine funding and budget item 114 was uh, the industrial revitalization uh, fund and that has to do with the derelict structures um, that's one they're tracking with us uh, with for them um, and item number 130 is the brownfields um, so a lot of the Virginia first cities are having issues with brownfields and not being able to get their economic development built on on those sites um, last item was number 69, the jail uh, per diem. So those are um, budget uh, amendments that Virginia First Cities, um, when we went to VML um, last week, that they um, told us that the um, was of importance because that would bring uh, the most money to the Virginia First Cities and, of course, of um, our ports um, with the host cities. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. And um, we had a good turnout at Virginia First Cities. The, the uh, governor spoke. Um, that afternoon was um, full of the hearings on the casino bills, one on the Senate side and one on the House. The House didn't finish until um, the House Committee on General Laws didn't finish until about 9.15. But um, so it's, we're working the General Assembly hard. Yes. And we need to continue to do so. Um, which brings us to the city manager's. Any other questions about the general center? <coughs> manager's report. Yes, Mayor. We have members of council. We have eight items on the city manager's report tonight. Uh, first is the home and city BG program income submitted by Robert A. Baldwin, who is the planning director, and its adoption of an ordinance accepting $117,000. $307.50 of community development block grant program income and 20000 of home investment partnership program income and appropriating said amounts in the FY 2020 community planning and development program fund. These monies come from properties that are being sold and you remember in 2018 the city um, had transferred back the properties um, from PRHA that were just sitting for years and now these properties are being soul and this money comes back and goes into the fund. The second is um, the Commonwealth Development Opportunity Fund submitted by Robert P. Moore, Economic Development Director, and its adoption of an ordinance accepting Commonwealth Development Opportunity Funding in the amount of $180,000 from the Virginia Economic Development Partnership Authority and appropriating said funds in the FY 2020 Grants Fund for distribution in accordance with the state guidelines and the furtherance of the development of former BASF site for the lineage logistics. And that's a part of the coal storage um, uh, development that's going on. The third is the Clean Community Commission Code Amendment. Uh, this is submitted by Solomon H. Ashby, City Attorney. And it's adoption of an ordinance to amend uh, and reordain Article 17 of Chapter 2 of the Code of the City of Portsmouth, Virginia, 20. 
2006 regarding the Clean Community Commission by modifying sections 2-803 to remove references to obsolete staff positions. And um, with this, the city clerk uh, will follow the process so that you all will, uh, people will be able to apply to be a part of the uh, Clean Commission and uh, will follow the process with you all for naming those persons. The next is the General Fund FY 2020 Appropriation Adjustment submitted by Theodore Falk, Chief Financial Officer for Portsmouth Public Schools, and its adoption of ordinance to modify the appropriation made by Ordinance 2019 through 106 adopted on December 10, 2019, by reducing the appropriation to the FY 2020 Portsmouth Public Schools General Fund budgets by the amount of $101,543 in accordance with the request the Portsmouth Public Schools. The next is a second grant item submitted by Theodore Falk, Chief Financial Officer. The title is General Fant Fund and General Grant Fund and General Fund Amending FY 2020 Grants Fund Budget. It will be an adoption of an ordinance to, number one, accept grant funding from the Virginia Department of Education in the amount of $255,652 and appropriating said sum in the FY 2020 Portsmouth Public Schools grant fund budget, and number two, authorize the transfer of $42,410 from the FY 2020 Portsmouth Public Schools general fund budget to the FY 2020 Portsmouth Public Schools grant fund budget to serve as the required local match for the said grant. The next is the code amendment for mooring of vessels that's submitted by James E. Wright, PE City uh, Engineer and its adoption of an ordinance to amend and ordain Article 1 of Chapter 6 of the Code of the City of Portsmouth, Virginia, 2006, regarding the regulation of vessels in the North Harbor and High Street Inlet and along the Portsmouth Seawall by amending Section 6-7 to clarify that the mooring of certain vessels used for the operation of a public ferry service is permitted. Next. Uh, item submitted by James E. Wright, PE City Engineer. It's titled Amendment to HRT Ferry Docking Agreement. Adoption of a resolution authorizing the amendment of an agreement with the Transportation District of Hampton Roads, um, Hampton Roads Transit regarding the use of the High Street Pier and the North Landing for public ferry service. The next is a grant of easement in Suffolk to VEPCO, V-E-P-C-O, submitted by Aaron K. Tremier, P.E., Director of Public Utilities. It's adoption of a resolution authorizing the grant of a utility easement to the Virginia Electric and Power Company, having a width of 15 feet across certain property located in the Holly Neck Borough of Suffolk. Those are the eight items that are before you tonight. All right. Before we go further, we do have a public hearing. Um, it's mm -hmm. a zoning application. Dr. Pat, do you mind if uh, yes. Mr. Baldwin comes yes. to the lectern? Give him up a date on that one. So um, do you need it on we'll do it for yeah. our, our standing policy. Um, I'll ask Deborah to read uh, the caption. Uh, we'll give the applicant 10 minutes to present. Uh, in this case, her application. Is she represented by somebody? Okay. She had her uh, contractor at the la at the planning commission meeting. Okay. And uh, then uh, I'll ask if council has any questions of the applicant. Then I'll ask uh, Mr. Baldwin to come and report um, on the status of, of the application. Um, is there anything special that we need to know about? No, just, you know, this is a house that had been a duplex in the past, and the uh, property owner had um, um, uh, moved away from the use as a duplex. You can, it'll be a slide, you'll see two, you know, formerly two meter boxes on the site. Because they had abandoned the use under the zoning ordinance, which now requires a use permit for duplexes and above, uh, she's required to come back and get a use permit to reestablish the duplex that was there before. Okay. Any questions? We'll hear this again. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
report backs. Please. Okay. Uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council, I have the following uh, report backs. Chair Beckett will begin the City of Portsmouth 2019 CAFRA audit review on Monday, February 17th. While they have done some testing of the city's control earlier in the summer and the fall, they now have the complete CAFRA document for audit. The finance staff is available to answer any questions and provide any additional documentation to Chair Beckett during the audit review process, which is expected to take three to four weeks. The Atlantic Union Pavilion. All panels for the pavilion canopy are in place and retentioning of the overall structure is at 50%. Retentioning will continue in the next two weeks as needed. Electrical repairs are underway. Demolitions of the seats is already started and it's scheduled um, to get all the seats out and the replacements to start um, um, immediately when all of them out and they are already preparing for the delivery and installation of the new sits, seats. Other reimbursements are nearing completion. They are advertising acts that are coming to our pavilion. The next is I shared with you during the retreat um, the Poverty Task Force formation. In front of you, you have a um, actually the <coughs> chart of how the task force is organized. Um, the steering um, committee will host its first meeting on February 26th. That will be the steering committee. And you see up there who the steering committee is on their chart. Mm -hmm. The steering committee consists of, of um, schools, courts, municipal departments, agencies. The steering committee will um, guide the work of the subcommittees covering the three broad areas of the task force, education, healthy thriving communities, and workforce development. Mayor and members of city council, we're asking you uh, to name eight citizens Two will be named to the steering committee and two each to the uh, subcommittees, which will be education, healthy <coughs> communities, and workforce development. And asking you to name people who have interest or some knowledge in these areas. Mm -hmm. But um, their meeting is not on the 26th. That is the first organization meeting of the steering uh, committee that will take place. And so. Um, Mrs. White will be the one that will receive whatever names you all are going to, and then we will get that to Mrs. Harris and and go from there. Um, I would, Mayor, like to introduce a video. It's a short video that we'd like to um, play for you. And this video is entitled, Whistle Your Way to Safety, and to empower every citizen to take personal safety serious uh, and advance our overall efforts to community policing and remain vigilant about safety. The Portsmouth Police Department has launched the Whistle Your Way to Safety program. The video you, are, you will preview this evening highlights safety tips we can use to protect ourselves. The promotional campaign and video in its entirety was filmed uh, edited and produced by members of the marketing and communication teams and the video services of PCTV. Whistle Your Way to Safety utilizes a simple and effective tool to whistle to assist citizens in alerting others in the immediate area about potential crime and emergency. Cut it up a little. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Detective K. Jump. Also, with the Portsmouth Police Department, take the safety of our citizens very seriously and know that every once in a while, we all need a little reminder on how we can stay safe when we're <coughs> going shopping, going to work or school, and or returning home. Today, we hope that the safety rules we share with you will help you and your family stay safe lessen the chances of you becoming the victim of a crime. First, always be aware of your surroundings. Be sure to look around and see where others are coming from. <laughs> Remember, if you can see them coming, you can be better prepared to react if the need arises. Second, don't allow your cell phone to become a distraction. These miniature computers are great for playing games, keeping notes, texting family and friends, but they can also be your worst enemy and they are very distracting. Therefore, when you are walking to your car, walking up to your school, business, or front door, put the cell phone away. Mm -hmm. Third, keep your whistle on your keychain, like this one. This keychain whistle is perfect to keep on your key ring 
or in your pocket, and it can easily be accessed should you need to use it. Four, always keep your keys in your hand. Not only will it make accessing your keychain whistle easy, but it will also make accessing your car or front door easier. Fifth, keep your head up and never look away. This rule is extremely important, especially if someone wishes to harm you or take something from you. By keeping your head up and making eye contact with those you see, you are letting them know you see them and you are less likely to become their target. Suspects like crimes of opportunity, and when you give them the opportunity, they will take it. But if you can identify them, they are less likely to target you. Six, call 911 for all emergencies, whether it's your emergency or someone else's. It is important for police to respond as quickly as possible to help someone in need. So remember, always dial 911. Hey, is everything okay over here? I'm calling 911. Okay, sir, just stay calm and hang on the line with me. I'm out in Cavalier Manor. I got you in 131, Don. Assault in progress, possible attempt at robbery. 2700 Freedom Road, 2700 Freedom Road. 141, 141, 151, assist. 141, in route from Freedom of Victory. Once you call 911, we are counting on you to be a good witness. Be sure to take notes of the suspect's height, weight, hair color, eye color, clothing description, scars, marks, tattoos, or anything else that could help officers identify who they are looking for. 141, you want to go down on custody? 141. So, in case of an immediate emergency, calling 911 is not an option for you or someone else. Blow as strong as you can into your keychain whistle. And continue to blow until the suspect leaves. By blowing into your whistle, you will not only startle the suspect, but you will also draw the attention of anyone else around you who may not realize that you or someone else is having an emergency. Hey, be aware of your surroundings is very important at night. At night, a person can hide or conceal themselves more easily than during the day. Remember, you do not have the gift of daylight which helps you see things not only up close, but also in the distance. At night, the area visible to you not only diminishes, but it can also almost be non-existent. They will hide behind buildings, in bushes, trees, and even cars. It's important to think ahead if you will be out after dark. First. Remember to park in an area that is not only well-traveled, but also well-lit at night. Second, have your keys in your hand and do not allow anything, such as a cell phone, to distract you. Lastly, if you are leaving school or work, leave with your classmates or coworkers, or ask a security guard to walk you to your car if one is available. Remember, traveling in groups lessens your chance of becoming a victim, and with your keychain whistle in hand, you will always be prepared to alert others if something is wrong. Lastly, our goal is to ensure that you have the tools necessary to prevent a traumatic event from occurring. Very good. As city manager, the responsibility for public safety is of utmost importance. We are all aware that police officers cannot be on every street corner, in every neighborhood, and at every function of which 96,000 plus citizens are active in our city daily. Not to include the many visitors that come to our city. When we think of public safety, we want every citizen to feel safe within our community. And we are aware across this nation that we as citizens can take some steps to make and ensure that we are safe. Reading about Europe, and in particular, in the London area in the 1800s, 
when Scotland Yard wanted all citizens to feel as if they were safe, and the development of a, something which we consider very simple, a whistle, was instituted in a part of their policing and being on patrol. That simple whistle today is a part of all police officers' equipment if it's directing traffic, trying to get someone's attention. When you hear the whistle, there's something about it that makes you pay attention. <laughs> so over the Christmas holidays, just thinking about what can we do, what can we institute to try to make sure that if someone in our community needed some kind of help, we could scream, we could blow the horn, but then it came to me after reading about how the whistle was so useful in Europe. Why not we institute a whistle your way to safety? So with that said, I talked with Chief Angela Green, shared it with some of the departmental staff, and then with that, we decided, let's just have a pilot program of whistle your way to safety. Over the past couple of weeks, since we have instituted this program, we have citizens that are calling and ask, where can I get the whistle? And I have decided that I'm gonna keep my whistle with me at all times. I'm sitting here right now, and on my bracelet, which most of us wear bracelets, I have affixed my whistle. And I can affix this whistle in my hand so that as I'm walking, it's not dangling, I'm holding it, and if I need help, I can easily just put it here, blow it, and with all of us learning, listen for the whistle, somebody needs help, then someone would come to my safety. I take it off at night, leave it right there on the dresser, pick it up in the morning, and when I'm even walking through City Hall or walking on the streets, I'm walking, and my bracelet is with me, but I also have my whistle. We never know when we may need help. And if we find ourselves in a dangerous situation, raise your whistle, blow it three times, and you will hear it and come and help. So I am asking every citizen to take the safety not only of yourself, but everyone a part of your responsibility and whistle your way to safety. Come and help me if you hear the whistle. <laughs> I keep my whistle with you. You should have your whistle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you all have your whistle. They got lots. We 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 you need more, we have more. <laughs> yes, they, they took mine. You got yours. <laughs> no, you don't need one. Uh, <laughs> I'm mine. Uh, you got a gun. <laughs> that ends up recently. All right, thank you. Yeah, very good video. Yeah. Thank you, and that's yeah, all done you. in house. Yeah. Uh, this brings us to uh, council. Lays on reports and, and Deborah's passed out a motion so we can consider uh, start the discussion for the poverty task force tonight. Okay, uh, we'll start with Shannon. Uh, liaison reports, yes, Shannon. sir. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just wanted to let everyone know I, I, I passed out the proposed scope of services letter engagement uh, for the National League of Cities Racial Equity and Leadership. Um, proposal and I'm excited about the fact that we're going to be moving forward we have an event scheduled the initial event scheduled for I believe March the 21st yes. at Tidewater Community College and, and if I could just take a minute mayor to kind of read a little bit for the audience's purpose to understand what this is all about the National League of Cities race equity and leadership uh, department is committed to working with cities where there there are processes uh, to improve in areas of race and equity. Real supports Portsmouth's commitment to recognizing the importance of balancing local government leadership, community engagement to address systematic and structural inequities. Recent events in the city lend some urgency to this effort and at the same time they create an opportunity for learning, growth and change. Our experience suggests that improving the racial equity in these systems and structures require political will, a readiness among all participants 
not uh, do business as usual and commitment from top leaders, public agencies, civil society and the community. So we're looking forward to having these folks come and help us to move forward in, in this area. And I gave you this information for you to review. This is the beginning of a long-term strategy. Um, if you have any questions relating to it, the information I handed out, please see me or Dr. Patton, and we, we will be more than happy to answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, I got um, Nate. Yes. Um, in reference to our meeting last night with the school board, uh, today, Vice Mayor and I have had multiple conversations where we're trying to go forward and set up the meeting with the other liaisons. Uh, Vice Mayor has sent out an email. So far, we have it narrowed down to one day next week. We're just waiting on one more person if they're available <coughs> on that date. So we're planning on meeting you know, as, as soon as possible since we discussed that. So we're going to do that next week. And in addition to that, we have a joint meeting with them on the 24th with our work session. So one thing that uh, Vice Mayor and I would like to ask everybody as we go and meet uh, with these other liaisons, as we're representing this whole body, it's not just us, we would like to know if anybody has any questions they would like us to relay to the liaisons from the school board. And if possible, if anybody has questions, if y'all could email them to one of us in the next couple of days so when we have that meeting next week, we can you know, forward those questions over to the liaisons with that meeting and then possibly you know, get some answers to any questions we may have at that meeting on the 24th. So we, we took that and took the steps to, to make that meeting happen and it looks like it's gonna happen next week. Good. Good job. That's it. Um, Nate, we, we did talk. Um, we're looking at February 18th. Um, and I know that, Deborah, we was going to try to secure this room, but I believe it's EDA's meeting time. That's probably Okay, correct. so we can meet, meet Bobby in the little little yeah. conference room. So February 18th. We have plenty of room. Yeah, Not only four of us. Yes, <laughs> there's only four of us. Thank you both for, for grabbing this and, and mm -hmm. running with it. Yeah. Good job. <clears throat> And we're due to get back with the joint meeting on the 24th? Right. Um, and um, one other thing, I mean, um, Mr. Parent um, did mention, of course, he wants to talk about um, the risk management and the reappropriation. And I did tell him that our city attorney would be coming forth with him. And I thought that that meeting would happen on the 20th when um, they have their meeting. But they, he mentioned that you are not on their schedule, so you need to... Um, um, schedule that with them. That's the last email I got before I came in. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean, we met last night. You guys hit the round this morning, right? That is. Thank you for doing that. Sense of urgency. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a liaison update, but uh, as we know, we move it into the budget season. I want to call your attention to. Uh, I think all of us got got this uh, from the retired uh, police. And, Firefighters Association, uh, and if there's no objection, I'd like to uh, uh, submit it to the budget process. Uh, they're requesting a $1,500 uh, stipend uh, to be paid uh, uh, one in July of 2020, one in January of 2021. And they're also requesting that uh, we continue the HRA uh, program as it uh, as it now stands uh, so uh, want to make you aware of that once again unless there are any objections I'd like to have that uh, included what, what in are the we budget. agreeing or objecting to uh, the the have us submitted uh, as part of the budget process consideration process yes consideration, consideration is the key word consideration. okay so without objection yeah. all right Please. so uh, Paul yeah. Yeah. Uh, Solomon sent me a tax that said that he had gotten a, a text from the senator saying, please report that Senate Bill 36 has been engrossed and passed on its third reading. So it's passed the Senate. Right. Now, let's, let's consider a motion to go into closed session to consider uh, the board's the appointments to the uh, Portsmouth Poverty Tax Force. Is there such a motion? Is it just this first one? This yeah, check? the first one. Okay, all right. Uh, I move to go into closed meeting uh, pursuant to Virginia Code subsection 2.2-3711A.1 for the purpose of discussing and considering prospective candidates for and appointees to boards and commissions. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? 
Hearing none, Madam Clerk, will you call the voice uh, vote, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Glover? Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Ms. Simmons? Yes. Mayor Ruff? Yes. We're in closed session. 